Hi, it's Maya here and it's book haul time. So at the beginning of June, I went uh, to London with my sister for a long weekend. And on Saturday, I met Elizabeth from Books and Pieces and Claire from Claire Rousseau. And we went book shopping together. So I'm going to start with all the books that I bought in London and tell you a bit about what we did in London. And then I'm going to show you the other books that I've got during June, just here in plain old Finland. First, when we met, we went to Forbidden Planet, of course, and from there I picked up one book. I was searching for a couple of books, but this is the one that I found from there, and it is A Natural History of Dragons by Mary Brennan. And this is a book that I've been wanting to read for a long amount of time. I think I added it to my Goodreads to read list when it came out, and that's quite a few years, years ago. So I found this from Forbidden Planet, and it is actually signed because... Mary Brennan was there just two days before we went there. I think Elis at least Elizabeth went to the signing. And that's the reason I managed to pick up a signed copy. And this is of course the first book in the Memoir by Lady Trent series, which is Memoirs of a Dragon Naturalist. At Forbidden Planet I also picked up one graphic novel, and that is Courtney Crummer in Tales of a Warlock by Tetanafi. And it says it's volume 7, but it actually is a separate story of the main Courtney Cromerin series, which is six volumes. This is the only one that I don't have. These are the gorgeous hardback full color editions. And this tells the stories of Courtney's Uncle Lucius as a young man. I also have it in these older black and white issues. So after that, we went to Foils, where we went to listen to Stephen Baxter and Alistair Reynolds talk about their Medusa Chronicles. I actually haven't read anything from Baxter or Reynolds, but it was still interesting. After Falls, we went to Gosh Comics, and that's the place where I found the most stuff. And it was actually from the children's comic section. I had this stack of about six comics that I went through and tried to decide which ones I wanted to pick up. And the first thing that I picked up from there was The Nameless City by Faith Erin Hicks. I read other comics by Hicks before. I've read Friends with Boys. I like the way she draws people. So this is a middle grade or early young adult comic. So this is a fancy comic set in The Nameless City. It's a city that has been taken over for so many times and every time the people who take it over give it a new name and the people who live there or ha and have lived there for all their lives only call it The Nameless City. The main character is Kaidu, who is a boy from the Dao country, which is currently holding the name of the city. That's him on the background. And he meets this girl called Rat, who's a street, a street urchin, and they become friends. I picked it up not only because it is by Faith Erin Hicks, but also because they are blurbs from the back from the co-creator of Avatar, from Chess Smith, the author of Bone, which I love from Kazuki Buishi and uh, Scott Westerfeld. I thought if the co-creator of Avatar said it's fun, it must be. It's quite colourful and has a lot of these parkour scenes on the roofs and nice city views. I've already read this one and it was fine. Uh, it felt a bit like a prelude. I was expecting a bit more. It's the one It's one of those books where you instantly know how the story is gonna go. I'm still glad I picked it up. From Gosh, I also picked up Baba Yaga's Assistant, which is written by Marika Makula and illustrated by Emily Carroll. And I love Emily, Emily Carroll. Look at the shiny eyes. Well, anyway, <laughs> this has been on my radar for a while and I really wanted it because of Emily Carroll and because I noticed that my library doesn't have it, so there's no way for me to read it. The naked hardback actually looks the same as the dust cover. I've actually already read this also and I gave it five stars. I loved it. I think it was a great children's book. I like Eastern European and Russian fairy tales because I watched a lot of Russian animations and other Slavic animations when I was a kid and I'm quite into Baba Yaga and also into Emily Carroll so this was awesome. I loved the way Baba Yaga was drawn. So the main story is kind of like this but I also like that when there are these little fairy tale asides uh, they are colored in a very different way. And the story tells of Masha, who is a girl who wants to become Baba Yaga's assistant. But she has to pass some tests until she can do that. So this was really pretty and fun. And if it was translated to Finnish, I would buy it instantly for my boyfriend's sister's kids. So the next day, on Sunday, me and my sister went to the Warner Brothers studio tour, the Harry Potter studio tour, and it was really great. There were so many costumes and props and everything from the movie. And I really liked the butterbeer ice cream. Also, all the staff was really nice. There was this girl just that just came to talk to us when we were looking at the wands, and she asked what the wands were our favorite, and told us what 
hers were and then told us little tidbits of information about the ones and it was so much fun. And I actually picked up a couple of things from there, not books, but I picked up a notebook, of course, Ravenclaw, because that's what I am. And it's a really nice sort of faux leather house crest notebook with these yellow pages that sort of try to look old. And there were, of course, notebooks of all the houses there. I also picked up this little Ravenclaw crest charm. I'm not quite sure where I'm gonna put it yet, but I think I'll think of something. They were also demonstrating this machine that in the first movie, when Harry's Hogwarts letters arrive from the post box and they're just a huge amount of letters fly in, they were demonstrating that one because it's actually a device strapped to the mail slot in the door and then a ton of letters just sprout out of it. So they demonstrated how it worked and you could pick up a letter addressed to Harry Potter and keep it. We also went inside the Hogwarts Express that was used in the movie and there was a new attraction that is the Dursley's house on Privet Drive but we didn't go inside there because there was quite a huge line and we were there quite late and we had to make sure that we got to go through the whole studio tour before the final bus left to the station. So we skipped Dursley's house but I had a great time. I don't think Dursley's house is a place that I would really like to visit. Instead we looked at other stuff like the animatronics there was a really creepy Voldemort baby animatronic and the Hogwarts Castle miniature, which is the size of a room. Uh, so I had a great time there. On Sunday, I also went back to Forbidden Planet with my sister and I picked up two more comics. I picked up Young Avengers Volume 2 and 3. These are the ones written by Karen Gillan with art by Jay McKelvey and colors by Matthew Wilson. So the team you know from Wicked and the Divine. This is actually the first thing that I read from this team and I really fell in love with it. I highly recommend this even if you haven't read the any other Young Adventures. So the second volume is Alternative Culture and the third one is Mic Drop at the Edge of Time and Space, which I think is a great title. I already had the first one, which is Style Over Substance. So these are comics that I've already read and loved, but I couldn't find the second volume or the third volume. I think the second was the hardest to find in either bookshops here or even online. I couldn't find it on Amazon or Book Depository. So I'm really glad that I remembered to look for it when I went to Forbidden Planet the second time. The art is really nice. So then we came home and I decided that, that because I hadn't spent all the pounds that I had reserved for the trip, I could spend a bit more money on books because I had planned to buy a couple of more in London but I hadn't found them and also it's quite good that I hadn't found them because my luggage was just on the weight level to go on the plane we only had hand luggage so I ordered two books online and the first one is The Geek Feminist Revolution by Cameron Hurley which is an essay collection I read one essay from her called We Have Always Fought and it was so good that I decided that I needed the book and it's just really really good looking and then another good looking book is Mary Robinette Cowell's Word Puppets, which is a collection of her short stories. Just look at the colors. I have read the first three Glamorous Histories books from Cowell and one of her novellas, The Midnight Hour, and I really like them. So I really wanted this. So we are almost through my book haul. I'm just gonna lastly show you some things that I bought actually before the London holiday. These are from a used bookstore and they were like two euros each. I picked up this funny edition of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in Finnish, the first book by Douglas Adams, because I have books two and three, I've seen them before in a science fiction video of mine. And I really like these 90s computer graphic covers that they have. And now I have the first three and I don't actually think I need the last two. I also picked up The Forever War by Joe Haldeman. I actually did a quick search when I was in the store and I noticed that our library system doesn't have this book, at least not in English, so of course I picked it up. So this is a science fiction story about a man who goes to war, but relativity means that a tour of duty lasting a few months for Mandela takes him away from home for centuries. And the final thing that I found from the used bookstore that really made me laugh and I had to pick it up is Spock Must Die, a Star Trek novel. So first officer Spock entered the transporter chamber, but as the whine of the machine died down, out from the chamber stepped two Mr. Spocks, identical, alike in every way, and both claiming to be the original. For the sake of the Enterprise, one of them had to be destroyed, but which one? So 
I couldn't pass this up. I love the cover and it's actually in pretty good condition when you consider that it came out in 74. I actually found out later that this is the first Star Trek novel that wasn't a novelization of a script from the TV series, so could pick me. And it's by James Blish. So those are all the books that I bought, but I actually went to the library today and there's this shelf where you can freely leave your own books and take some books. For some reason there were comics there and there was a random issue of Adventure Time, Candy Capers. I looked inside and it has a couple of short stories. There were actually many copies of this issue there, so I picked one up. And there was also one issue of Lumberjanes Beyond Bayleaf, which is a one-shot written by Faith Erin Hicks with art by Rosemary Valero O'Connell and colors by the series colorist Marta Laiho. The cover is also really nice. So I think I picked up a lot of great stuff in June and especially these three books are so beautiful that they make all my other books look really, really shabby. They're so beautiful and I want to read all of them soon. So this is the whole stack and this is like the London Hall or the books that I tried to find when I was in London. So I had a really great time in London and I'm glad I met Elizabeth and Claire. I don't think I was too awkward because I'm actually quite shy and silent first when I meet new people. It takes me quite a while to get to know people and talk more and open up, but I think I did great and I really liked meeting them and going book shopping with them. I'd also really like to meet everyone who is coming to the World Con in Helsinki next year. I think Elizabeth and Claire are both coming, at least I hope. Let me know in the comments if you are coming or planning on coming. I'll definitely be there. I think I've gone on long enough. I hope you like this video and I'll see you all later.